Hey, what's going on, guys? Sincere here with Who is Sincere.com, Anon Radio Live, and the All Right Show. I'm bringing you a story today about Corinne Gaines. Now, I've been on Twitter here, and you know, Facebook, you're not going to see all, you know, as many rude posts on Facebook because a lot of the cowards um, that are out there in the world, they don't want to portray themselves as bad people and you know stuff like that they don't want to lose their jobs and, and all kind of good stuff they don't say a lot on Facebook so they say a whole lot on Twitter I'm not even going to bother to entertain uh, I'm not even going to go into Twitter to entertain it I, I just I'm not going to do it I just got done shutting down some lady who is uh, women for Donald Trump and I just got done shutting her down by saying wow it's amazing that you uh, relentlessly support the police in whatever actions that they may take. Um, I didn't say it in as quite nice terms as I'm saying it right now, but you know, it's it's crazy that you would just support them in what actions they may take. And I gave her the actual crime statistic data for the police officers and how their actual margin of how they rape and sexually assault American citizens is more than 30% higher than the general public per 100,000. We obviously know there's not as many cops as there is citizens. If you've done the statistics per 100,000, cops are raping and sexually assaulting our children, our infants, our babies, and our women. The statistical fact put together by a group of analysts and doctors. People with Ph. degrees, uh, degrees that I don't have, PhDs, degrees that I definitely don't have. So this is not, you know, just some kind of rogue information. We're talking about a culture of policing in America that is, that's turned into tyranny. Now I'm trying to tell you white people out there that don't understand what's going on. You are being led like sheep into a totalitarian state. You are being led like sheep to the slaughterhouse. And you know what's going to put white people in the slaughterhouse faster than anything? Their complacency. Their ignorance. Pure ignorance. Now, I'm not talking about ignorance when people say, oh, you're ignorant, and they mean rude. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about pure ignorance, a lack of knowledge. Just like the, the individual I was just talking to on Twitter, um, she shut up and went away. I think she went to go do some research because as a woman, how are you supporting somebody that has three rape cases against them? And you're talking about Bill Clinton's rape cases. Don't even know that your own candidate has rape cases against them. So she went away to go research that information real quick. Now this is what I'm talking about. Corinne Gaines, shot and killed by the Baltimore Police Department. They just let go of all the rest of the police officers dealing with the Freddie Gray case. Now we're actually dealing with another case right here in Baltimore where they shot and kill a woman. Excuse me. And let's let's go down here. Let's just go down the list a little bit. Let me see. Okay, we'll we'll go to Sean King's post. There you go. Sean King's post is pretty popular already. Corinne Gaines, 23-year-old mom, just shot and killed by police in Baltimore. Her five-year-old son was also shot and is in the hospital. Friends tell me she regularly documented police abuse in the city and that her Facebook videos right before police killed her have been deleted. At this point, I'm not really believing any of the police narrative. Lord, help this young woman's family. So, let me break it down for you. From what has been said, okay, and I'll, I'll even scroll down so you can see it because I've been called a liar about this already. So, let me scroll down and find it. And I'll try to get you guys a link here uh, for what I'm about to show you. Excuse my computer for being a little slow. Let's scroll down. We're going to find it. Because I want you people to see that these people, I mean, they're, they're literally lying through their teeth. And this is what you have to catch. You have to catch these situations in the beginning as they unfold 
because you'll start to hear, you know, you can uh, see what the narrative is that's coming out of the police department. And I think that's very important to know what they're actually saying. Don't get caught up in all the Twitter and Facebook comments and all that kind of stuff. You know, it's easy to get lost in that and start arguing back and forth with folks, but you don't even have to do that. Just, uh, you can deduce the situation yourself and, and go investigate. See what's actually being said. See what these police departments are actually saying. So the police department, the Baltimore Police Department, has already come out with a video. And in this video, they state that uh, Corinne was wielding a shotgun. Okay? Wielding a shotgun. Um, and pretty much had the officers in a standoff position for hours. The funny thing is... This is their, their narrative is this. They say they were there to serve a warrant, that there was a plainclothes police officer that was there, and there was uh, some backup, some SWAT backup. Now, they're there to serve a warrant, that's all. If you want to know what the warrant is for, I actually uh, found out that she was, uh, there was a littering incident that happened earlier this year, and based on that littering incident, um, they, they charged her also uh, resisting arrest and something else. So, I just think that it's very interesting that, let me see here. Alright, so I'm obviously not going to get it with my slow computer here. Let's see. Mm, I really wanted to show you guys this. Okay, this is what I'll do. I'll leave a link in the, uh, in the description section below so that you, you'll be able to actually see uh, what the police officers had to say about the situation. Now, what they said in their press conference was uh, she was being served this warrant, and in the process of being served the warrant, they, um, they, they opened her door. Now, they also said that they heard a male inside, a female inside, and a crying baby. Okay, so a male, female, crying baby. That's what they said that they heard inside of these apartments, uh, inside this particular apartment. So, as they stood at the door, they, you know, knocked several times. They identified who they were, as, as I'm giving you the narrative of what they're saying. They, they identified who they were. And um, upon, like, about 10 minutes later, after her not opening the door, um, they proceeded to open the door themselves with a key from the landlord. So as they opened the door, they said they opened it a crack, and they could see that she, was, um, that she had a child uh, there with her and that she was wielding a weapon. They, were, they said two different things, to be honest with you, that... Uh, she was sitting on the middle of the floor with the child and she was wielding a weapon and that they opened the door and she was pointing a weapon at them. So we don't really know which, you know, case it is here. And they say they only cracked the door open a little bit, but she was pointing the weapon at three officers. So, you know, I look, I'm no expert, but the story that they're giving is all jacked up. Okay? So, they said they had a standoff uh, with Corinne for several hours, um, and that, you know, that, that ended, you know, it was to no avail. They didn't get any, uh, any further with her. So, what did they do? They decided to open a door and shoot her. Straight up. That's exactly what happened. That's exactly what they said in the police interview, was that they fired the first shot at her. Now... I don't understand how you can shoot multiple shots from a shotgun, but they are saying that Corinne fired multiple shots back at the officers, at which point in time they opened pretty much a barrage of fire on her and killed her and shot her son. Like I said, I'm no expert, but all I know is out of every police shooting that we've ever seen happen and out of the way that they're trained, it is inconsistent what they're saying. First of all, was the door shut? Was the door open? Um, 
you know, if, if that many officers were firing on her, they must have came in her house. Okay? So they, it must have been several of them in the house. Now, the point that I really don't like about all of this is um, they won't release the name of the boyfriend. They haven't released the name of the boyfriend yet. Uh, they, they don't know it all of a sudden. Uh, they're not sure what it is. Um, even though they were there to serve him a warrant, but yet the police, uh, you know, the police, whoever it was, the chief or whoever came out to, to talk about this event for the press conference and the, the female that came with them, they don't know the name of the person. <laughs> it just, it baffles the mind. Now, another thing they didn't address is if they went to the residence, they heard the male, they heard the female, and they heard a crying child, how in the world did that man walk out of that apartment building and get away and he was found some, some distance away from the actual uh, location, from the actual apartment? How did he leave? How did he leave with a one-year-old child? Did he climb out of a window with a one-year-old child? And how is that possible when it's surrounded? Okay? So, after Corinne was uh, shot and killed, mysteriously, all her social media accounts were taken down right away. Right away. Now, Corinne is, has been known to be an activist. She's actually somebody that stands up in the community against uh, police brutality. So how coincidental is that, that, you know, they would shoot and kill a person like this and immediately disable her Facebook? Immediately, and she had posted videos on there of the situation as it was unfolding. Now, unfortunately, in one of the videos, you know, she's seen talking to her son, and she's like, and she's very coherent, she's very calm, and she's saying, hey, you know, who's that at the door? And he's saying, the police... Here's one of the videos here. I'll make sure I try to leave links uh, for you guys so you can see these videos yourself. Um, and he's saying, you know, the police. And she's asking him, you know, what do they want to do? Why are they here? And he says, they want to kill us. This is the state that we are in in this country. The police are not friends of the black community. If you think that marching up and down a street somewhere uh, it is making you, I don't know how to say this, is making you uh, more in line with the police department and that things are going to be uh, uh, wonderful and great after you march with the police officers and, and there's quote unquote unity. You are sadly mistaken. The numbers have not dropped in the amount of homicides that come out of policing since last year. As a matter of fact, they have risen we are at a higher point than we were last year. So we're talking about policing in the community that is just really, really, I mean, it's overstepped its boundaries completely. And the funny thing is, it does not matter what these officers do. It doesn't matter how they hurt the community. It's never looked at as, uh, it's actually the officer's fault. It's always looked at as it's the victim's fault. When are we going to get by that narrative? How many times do we have to see officers lying on the stand? How many times do we have to see them falsifying reports? I mean, how can we believe any of the narrative? Any of the narrative coming out of the Baltimore Police Department after they just let go all of the people who perpetrated a crime against Freddie Gray. How? How? I'm literally asking. Now I'm going to keep it real with you. I defended this country. I'm a veteran. I'm a veteran with an honorable veteran. So with that being said, I've always looked at my white brothers and sisters as I would give my life for you. I would help to defend your life with my life. So how is it that my white brothers and sisters do not see, that they literally do not see that we are being exterminated in America? And this is what I was talking about dealing with that ignorance. We're up against a system of people that don't give a shit about us. Not just black people, 
I'm talking about anybody that falls in the class system underneath middle class. Lower middle class to underneath middle class, they don't care about you. The only reason that they give a little bit of care about you is because you're worth tax revenue. That's it. That's it. There is no secret here. This country is built on money. That's what makes this country move money. Not Democrats, not Republicans. None of that bullshit matters. None of it matters. And what my white brothers and sisters don't understand is they're pitting you against the African American. The African American is standing up. They're the only ones with backbones in this country that are literally standing up to police corruption. They are taking the charge in standing up to police corruption while our white brothers and sisters, for the most part, we have some of them out there with us, you know, demanding that changes take place, but for the most part are sitting on the sideline. They're not worried about it because it hasn't affected them yet. They jump into conversation, have irrational opinions because they're speaking out of ignorance. They're speaking out of misleading publications from articles written by people that are obviously extremist or racist. And they take these views on as facts. When statistically speaking, crime has dropped consistently for the last 20 years. Murders, homicides have dropped consistently for the last 20 years. We are in a safer world today than we were in 1994 to 1996. That is a statistical fact. And there are more people, millions of more people, and we are still safer than we were 20 years ago. So we are not in some kind of war against the police. If anything, the war is against the American citizen, not just the black American, the American citizen. We are on the list to be exterminated first. If you think that undesirable white people don't come after that, you are sadly mistaken. You're next. You are next. And then there will be no room and no place for you to stand with us in the marching lines because you'll feel uncomfortable standing next to us because for all this time you've been demonizing and saying, hey, those people are making it up. They're not being killed. They're just a bunch of savages or just a bunch of animals. And what you don't get is it's coming for you too. This isn't a game. It's not a joke. You're not going to have a utopian society if black people are exterminated, if Mexicans are all kicked out of the country, and if Muslims go back home. No. The Indians don't want you here. And that's what I'm saying. Our white brothers and sisters have to learn how to start working with other people and understanding their point of view and understanding where they're coming from. Or else this is coming to a doorstep near you. Mark my words, your children will start falling like flies. Give it a few years. Give it a few years. You will not be cared about. The only thing that predicates racism is classism. Racism is being used to divide us right now. But they're going to use classism to really slice the cake and decide how they want this country ran. If you don't fall above a certain economic bracket, it doesn't matter what your color is. Welcome to hard times. Corinne Gaines, another example of a black person being gunned down. Gunned down and the child shot and the police officers shot first. So why is it that Corinne Gaines, if she was wielding a shotgun, if she was wielding a shotgun, why is it that Corinne Gaines didn't shoot first? Why? Why do you think that is? Because she had no intentions of hurting anyone. She had no true intentions of hurting anyone, but she knew what was about to come to her. She knew that they weren't just there to arrest her and to arrest her her, uh, her boyfriend, they were there to take her children away as well. Okay, this is what we're talking about. We're talking about a system that wants to own your children. 
We're talking about a system that wants to break your family up. Corinne knew, and she was no dummy, that by her going to jail, by her man going to jail, that those kids were out of there. Those kids were going directly in the care of the state, and God only knows what would happen to them. That's what black America is dealing with. We're having our children snatched from us. We're being thrown in jail for crimes that we haven't committed. Or, if you want to be technical, Corinne died over a littering charge. This all stemmed out of littering. Supposedly littering. An officer said that, uh, pulled her over, said that uh, she was littering. I guess then he tried to arrest her and, and it goes from there. Okay? So only in America is this kind of shit happening. And only in America do people feel justified about the amount of people that are dying. And they say, hey, you know what? Comply. Comply or die. That's the way it is, man. Comply or die. You do what they say or you die. What about the Constitution? What about our rights? What about all that stuff? How many unarmed people have to be killed? Why is Corinne Gaines' Facebook taken down so that we can't analyze what truly happened in that moment? Why don't the police officers know whether they had body cams or not? These are all valid, legitimate questions. I watched the news press conference. I wrote my questions down. I studied the situation already. And there are tons of red flags. I'm getting pissed off, personally. I'm pissed. I'm pissed because none of this shit is right. I'm pissed because we shouldn't be going through this in 2016. I'm pissed because people think it's okay for cops to keep killing people across America. Well, you know what? It's not okay. And there's some of us that are getting extremely fucking pissed. The time for this shit has to stop. It has to stop black men and black uh, black men and other uh, ethnicities as well. We're not going to sit around and let cops come into our homes or take our women and rape them, take our children and rape them, take our kids from school and rape them, to, uh, take our toddlers and rape them, and then kill us. I don't know where they do that at, where people sit around and just let that happen. So my question is, are they trying to stoke a war? Because all of this is happening. I'm not making any of this up. I can show you statistical, statistic, factual data that this is a real paradigm that we are living in right now. Matter of fact, let's see if we can bring it up real quick. Let's see if my computer will work with me a little bit here. Let's try to actually bring up that data. There you go. I don't want you to say I'm lying. Okay? General public per 100,000. Law enforcement per 100,000. Just like I said earlier in this video. Read that line right there. Sexual assaults. 28.7 to 67.8. That is almost 40% more per 100,000. Look at the murders. Per 100,000, law enforcement are killing more of us than we're even killing per 100,000 ourselves. If you understand statistics, you have to look at this and start to question what you support. If you're one of those blue line people, if you're one of those blue line people and you have a daughter, would you want your daughter to fall in the 67.8 bracket? If you have a toddler, okay, you, you keep saying to yourself, why does he keep talking about kids getting raped? Let's take it to another level then. Here's a few cases. I'll give you one, okay? Jesus, I don't even want to read this because it's that bad. Former Boise officer confessed a gruesome case of sexual abuse. Officers state that he may have raped up to 20 infants or toddlers. Investigators state at least five of the 20 victims were infants. Details indicating the offender 
purposely worked at elementary schools with young children and merged. The offender spent 11 years with children who were most likely taught to trust police officers. I don't have to make this crap up. This isn't headline news all over the United States because there's an agenda at play. The agenda is to enslave the American population. The joke is on you. For all you people out there that think you want to support the blue line and, and, and you know support your police officers, let's take them bottles of water and all this shit. They make enough to be able to get their own water. I wouldn't you know, ever deny anybody water, but I'm just saying, all this extra shit that I see going on, Blue Lives Matter, come on, man, are you trying to hijack the Black Lives Matter movement? Come up with your own fucking movement. Nobody wanna hear that dumb shit? Blue Lives Matter. Y'all aren't getting killed the way that American citizens are getting killed. As a matter of fact, let me give you the statistics to that. Less than 50 officers uh, less than 50, that's not even one fucking officer per state, died last year in the United States. Less than 50 officers. What was it, 1,200 people that they killed and, and well over a, and a couple hundred of them unarmed last year? More unarmed black people are dying than actual police officers are dying in the line of duty. And you want to tell me there's a war on cops? When more unarmed people are dying, that's statistically retarded. You can't bring stupid logic to a person that knows how to read. A person that knows how to interpret, uh, you know, statistical analysis. There is no war on cops. That's being used to make you more docile to what is actually going on in America. This is what's going on in America. That's not enough for you? Okay, let's go read another one. Here you go. Police sergeant doubles as serial rapist, gets 440 years in prison after being convicted of 35 counts of rape, kidnapping, and stalking. One of the longest sentences in Illinois history. That motherfucker should have been placed to death. They should have given him the chair. I don't know the state's laws on that, but he should be on his way to death row. 35 counts of rape, not enough for you? A problem. I'm going to show you why we need to start protecting our women. Let's, let's, let's give you another one then. Here you go. Two Oklahoma City law enforcement officers were arrested and charged with rape. In one case, the officer is alleged to have raped eight Africana women, and the other officer is alleged to have raped three. Okay? <laughs> this is what I'm telling you guys. This shit is real. This is affecting America. This is, a, this is destroying the fabric of our country. How can you tell these people to, to trust police officers when they likely have a loved one or a family member that has been sexually assaulted or raped by a police officer? Now, for you dumb fucks out there that are going to say, oh, well, you know what? Not all police officers are bad. There's actually some cops that are good. I have some family members that are cops that are good. Do your family members ever call out the corruption that they see? Do they ever get on, get off of their high horse and say, you know what? I don't care about my salary. I care about lives. I care about my integrity. I'm calling this bullshit out. If your family members and your friends that are police officers are not spearheading the calls to call out this bullshit, then they are a part of the problem. Unlike an organization that I've heard of called 100 Blacks in Law Enforcement, where they have banded together, they are police officers, and they call out the bullshit in the police department, but they banded together so they wouldn't be attacked. And that's real. Look it up. So at the end of the day, I, I'm struggling. I'm struggling here. I put out a post just earlier today asking, as an African-American veteran that cares and truly loves this country, even though it doesn't give me great reason to love this country, but I truly care, I truly love this country, and I have hope 
for the equality that can be built through this country. As a person like that, as a person with integrity, I am asking, what can we do? I am pleading to find the answer. If justice is subverted over and over and over again, what do you expect people to resort to? Think about that. Let that settle in. How many more times can men allow their wives to be killed? How many more times can brothers allow their brother to be killed? How many more times can fathers allow their sons to be killed before there is a mass uprising in a real war? How many more times? Come on, let's keep it real. Let's, keep, let's just go all the way into it since we're talking about it. I know this is supposed to be about Corinne Gaines, and it is. And it goes a little bit further than that, and that's why you're going to get this work today. But it goes further than that, so let's talk about it. At the end of the day, white people aren't flying out uh, to the gun manufacturer. I mean, black people aren't flying out to the gun manufacturer saying, hey, let me get about 300 of them ARs. Let me grab a couple of them nines. Let me get, um, ooh, let me get about 15 of them shotguns. That's not happening. But you know what? There's people coming to our hood and they're dumping off guns. You get an AR in the street for a couple hundred. You serious? You get ammunition next to nothing. So at the end of the day, we have people preying on the African American community by dumping guns in the street because they look cool. So people get one. And then that turns into violence when you have people that don't understand conflict resolution. So it turns to black on black violence. And then the same people that sold the guns in our neighborhood uh, illegally sold the guns and dropped them off along with the dope. And then, oh, look at the savages. They're, they're killing themselves. What, what's going on here? We don't understand. I mean, all we did is engineer an economic crisis among urban communities across the United States, dropped off some guns and a whole ton of powder, and we don't know what happened. If you don't see that narrative, you're fucking stupid. You're stupid. Go check yourself in. You're dumb. You're done for. If you don't see that plan and that plot in progress and the end game behind that, you have to be slow. Something's wrong with you. You can't deny facts. It's a known fact that the CIA has dropped off guns and drugs in our neighborhood and they've been doing it for decades now. Okay? So don't talk to me about black crime. Don't talk to me about that bullshit. When you got the white man coming to the neighborhood and, and dropping off all the tools of destruction necessary. So this is what I'm standing for right now. If, if these Democrats are going to keep to have guns taken away, okay? I don't stand with Democrats. Let me just keep that straight 100 with you. I don't stand with Republicans either. Those motherfuckers are terrible. Democrats are terrible too. But if the Democrats are going to keep pushing to get guns taken away, this is what I'm going to call for. That we defund, de, uh, de, uh, defund the police department and also unarm them. If you're going to take guns away from the general population, take them from the police. Take them away. Nobody would be getting shot on either side now. I could tell you one thing. Over my cold, dead body, will the, uh, will the government ever take a gun from me if they don't plan on giving up their own weapons and ammunition? Look, I, I took an oath. I'm trained. I can hit shit from a couple hundred yards away with no problem. No problem. So at the end of the day, a trained person like me to protect my family, to protect my country from enemies both foreign and domestic, 
I will hit you two football fields away with no problem. Three max. That's what I'm talking about. At the end of the day, we need our weapons for enemies both foreign and domestic. What do you think we have guns for? The Republicans know that. But this is my, my point. This is why the Republicans are missing the ball. And this is why the elite, they're laughing. They're having a ball right now. They're having a great time. Because black people are actually standing up for their rights. And Republicans, especially the white Republicans, are saying, hey, you, 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 Negroes need to calm down. You're making too much noise. You're complaining about nothing that's really there. When we are literally falling into a tyrannical situation where our enemy is a domestic enemy and is being supplied by our tax dollars. So when I talk about defunding the police, that's what the hell I'm talking about. You don't got to pay these income taxes. Go fill out your W-4 form right now and write exempt on it. Write exempt on it. Out of your next paycheck, they're not taking no income taxes. I bet you didn't know that. No confidence. If they ask you why, no confidence. You have no confidence in the system. Exempt. You're not taking my income taxes to fund this bullshit. To fund the enslavement of lower class people in America. And that includes black people and white people. Remember, I said classism, not just racism. That's for us to fight over. That's what they give it for us to fight over. They're operating off of classism. Most of you people just aren't smart enough to understand that. It's time we stand up. It's time we defund them. Go to your employer tomorrow. And, and, and you know what? Let me pull this back up here if I can. Go to your employer tomorrow out of respect for Corinne Gaines and fill out your, your uh, W-4 form and write exempt. Just write exempt. Don't let your taxes be taken from you anymore by a tyrannical force. If you are in Baltimore, go to your employer tomorrow and write exempt. There's no reason to pay for a police department that is not protecting you and they are killing you. Why would you pay for that? Who wants to pay for that? Nobody wants to pay for that bull. Come on. Defund them. Rest in peace, Corinne Gaines. Speedy recovery to her five-year-old son. Um, from what was actually said in the press conference, and I actually, let me just, just to show you. I actually downloaded the press conference it's right there. As a matter of fact, what I may be able to do, let me see here. Let's see what we can do here. Maybe we can pull it up still. I'd really love to pull that up for you guys. Okay, so this is acting slow on me too. That's fine. No worries. Um, yeah, no, no worries here. But I just downloaded the video, um, and like I said, guys, I, I'll make sure I, you know, leave a link to that video so you can actually you know, see this police. <laughs> you got to see these things, man. You got to see them with your own eyes to believe the level of corruption that's going on. But when you talk about a police department that is coming out with an obvious false narrative, no one is believing it. And now you got the white people making things up, talking about uh, Karen used her baby as a shield. The amount of incredible disinformation that is already floating is crazy. The police department never said anything about Karen using her child as a shield. Never said anything like that. So, I think that this situation is very interesting. Uh... Needless to say, based on the fact that Freddie, Gray, uh, Freddie Gray's killers were just cleared of all charges just, what, a week ago? So I think that this narrative that's coming out of the police department in Baltimore is very interesting. 
And this just goes to show the over-policing and what happens with over-policing, how one petty situation, such as supposedly littering out of your car, can now result to months later of you losing your life and your child getting shot. This is why I stay away from police officers. Because any little small thing you do can be misconstrued, you can be shot, you can be killed. And guess what? They will rationalize it. And your life will then just be a waste. Because they don't care. So this is my point. When are we going to start standing up to this? I'm not inciting violence against a police department. But I am saying this. Where the hell are our Black Panthers at? Where the hell are they at? I know I'm tired. I know my black brothers and sisters are tired. We need a presence in the community that will make us feel safe. Right now, when we see these police cars going up and down our blocks, we don't feel safe. We don't even feel safe with our children being around them. I just showed you the rape statistics. Come on, 20 infants? And that's not national headline news. If you, if you don't understand why it's not, you are crazy. You are certifiably crazy. There is a plot and a plan to make sure that information like that does not become the evening news. Because it will cause mass distrust in the police department. So what do they do instead? They hire more psychopaths that are like that and they cover up the crimes continually and consistently. And you sit there and say, I defend the blue line no matter what. With your little girl standing at your standing beside your leg, I defend the blue line no matter what. Are you serious? Are you serious? I guess you are serious because a lot of you support Trump and the man has had three rape cases against him. Six bankruptcies, three rape cases. What a loser. What a Failure. <laughs> With a little bit of money, a little bit of a media machine, and you're all suckered in. And you all think that your country is going to be great again like it was in the 50s and 60s. It wasn't shit great in the 50s and 60s. And that's why you're, that's why you're being deceived. Was it nothing great? We were in great turmoil, you dummies. So at the end of the day, rest in peace to this black queen, Corinne Gaines. Gorgeous, beautiful black mother. And just looks like she was a great person who was an activist in the community, who stood up for Freddie Gray and other individuals um, that have been shot and killed by police. And just rest in peace to her and, and my respects to her family. My respects to her family and to the woman that she was. Thank you, Queen, for standing up for our community. Thank you. Now, I'll tell you this. If she did have a shotgun, and even if she pointed it at police, she didn't shoot first. She never shot first. She said, she said please leave. If she had a gun. There's no official record of that. I want to see the fingerprints on the gun. I want to hear from, from the, uh, the father. I want to know his name. But we're not getting any of that information first because they have to control the narrative. So if you are dumb enough to think that the police are giving you a clean, 100% cut clean story, you, you should just go jump off a cliff. You know that that's not the case. You would love for it to be the case, but it's simply not the case. These people are crooked. These people are criminals. I just showed you the statistics. You can't even come on this video and argue with me and tell me that most cops are good when they're raping more uh, uh, citizens in America per 100,000 than the general public, these trained professionals taking your little girls and your wives to secret locations uh, while they're handcuffed and raping them, taking them to the police station, they file a complaint and it's dismissed. And this is what you support? This is what you stand up for?
get the fuck out of here. You people aren't serious and nothing that you talk about is serious. Rest in peace to Corinne Gaines. Much respect to that black queen. Much respect to her. And for all you other people, fuck off.